Choose God and embrace life. Welcome to the Rosh Hashanah Perspective. The Rosh Hashanah Perspective is being dedicated in memory of Moshe Morris ben Naji HaKoyin. May his soul be uplifted and his memory a blessing. It is not a coincidence that we read the Torah portion of Nitzavim on the Shabbos before Rosh Hashanah. Parshas Nitzavim has some of the most fundamental principles in all of Judaism. Some examples include free will, the necessity for unity between the Jewish people, the ultimate redemption, and the practicality of Torah throughout all of time. The Parsha begins with the statement from Maishu Rabbeinu, Atem nitzavim hayoyim kuchem lifnei Hashem elekechem. You are all standing today before God. Rashechem, shiftechem, ziknechem, v'shaytrechem, kol ish Yisrael, tapechem, neshechem, v'garecha ashir bekerav machanecha, mechoite v'etzecha, ad shayev mimecha. From the tribal leaders, elders, officers, to the men, women, young children, converts, woodchoppers, and the water carriers. Each one of you may have a profound relationship with God. The Lubavitcher Rebbe explains that the day the Pasuk is referring to is Rosh Hashanah. And Moshe Rabbeinu is explicitly stating the many different types of Jewish people, ranging from the great rabbis to young children, to teach us that when we hear the shofar and we crown God as our king, we are all equal in the eyes of Hashem. And if you pray to Him earnestly, and with genuine sincerity, you too can develop a profound and everlasting bond with God. Each time we hear the shofar during davening, we say the words, Hayoyim Haras Olam. Today is the birthday of the world. As it is the day that Adam was created, so it is the birthday of the purpose of the world, mankind. However, the Avudraham on Rosh Hashanah asks a question. The translation of the words Haras Olam actually means pregnant forever. The translation can be found in the Pasuk in Yermio, where he deplores the day that he was born. I wish I remained Haras Ilam, eternally in utero, in his mother's womb. Meaning that he wished that his mother's pregnancy would have not ended in his birth. So what does Haras Ilam really mean? Does it mean perpetual pregnancy and lack of delivery? Or does it mean the birthday of the world? There's an anecdote to explain this. There was an older man known for being very wise. Once, one of the young boys of the village decided to test his wisdom. He would capture a butterfly and hide it in his hands. And then he would ask the wise man if the butterfly was alive or dead. And if the wise man answered that the butterfly was alive, the boy would crush the butterfly so that when he opened up his hands, the butterfly would be dead. However, if the wise man answered that the butterfly was dead, the boy would open up his hands and let the butterfly go free. So no matter what the wise man said, he would make a fool of him. The young man came to the wise man and asked, Sir, if you are indeed as wise as everyone believes you to be, please tell me whether the butterfly in my hands is alive or dead. For a mere moment, the wise man thought, before staring straight into the young boy's eyes and replied, My son, whether the butterfly is alive or dead depends on you. It is within your hands. The Avudraham explains that the translation of Ayayim Haras Oilam is up to us. Only we can decide if this will be the birthday of the world and the year that we give life to our potential hopes and dreams. Or the opposite, heaven forbid, if this will be the year that our potential stays perpetually in utero and a year that our lives stay stagnant, passive and stationary. Our life is up to us like the butterfly within the young boy's hands. It is up to us and us alone to choose what we do with it. It is now perfectly clear why Parashat Tzavim is read right before Rosh Hashanah. As the Pasuk in the end of the Parsha states, Today I place before you life and death, the blessings and the curses. You shall choose life so that you and your children will live. Moshe Rabbeinu in his final address is telling the Jewish people to choose God and embrace life as they are one and the same. As we see in Tehillim, that David HaMelech writes, Ki imcha makar chayim ba'archa nire ar. With you Hashem is the source of life, and is within your light that we will see our light. 
Choosing God and embracing life means constant growth, development, and advancement. And when we grasp onto God, He will give us a glimpse of our true capabilities and potentials, which will motivate us to aim higher and reach further than we ever thought possible. As you hear the Shaifer this Rosh Hashanah and recrown God as the one and only true King, close your eyes and affirm your decision. You must decide to choose advancement over stagnation, to choose potential over hopelessness, to choose ambition over apathy, to choose God so that you may embrace life. May you all be blessed with a happy, healthy, and sweet new year. Gemar Hasima Toiva.